All right. So you talked about, you know, pushing back against things. There comes a time in every narrative where, where the student has to face the, the, the teacher. And I think that time is upon us right now, man, because you, you talked about uh, the, the LeBron narratives and the Warriors. And I know you've called uh, Stephen Curry famously the GAMOT, the greatest mirage of all time. Me, yes. I have Stephen Curry ranked number nine all time right now with room to grow on the all time great basketball players list. So we're obviously on two very opposite ends of the spectrum there. Today, we got to settle the score. On, on, right here, right now, on the Reagan Griffin Jr. podcast, we are going to settle the score on Stephen Curry. You're my guest, so I'll, I'll let you go first. I'll give you that courtesy. But, you know, I, I, I definitely have a beef with uh, how, how, you, uh, how you portray Stephen Curry. I, I think people think that Steph is that guy, and he's not that guy. Steph is a great shooter. I get it. He's not the greatest shooter of all time. I would take Ray Allen any day or Reggie Miller to make wow. me a clutch shot in a big game. There's no doubt about it. Steph, when the game, when his team is behind or uh, or uh, tied in the uh, final 10 seconds, he's 0 for 8 in those games. Just this past year in the uh, playoffs, there was a chance where he could have forced a game seven. I remember uh, that, yeah. And, and he had a shot. He had a, he had a, he had a look. He could have take, taken a step or two in. And taking a two, he didn't need a three, put up a three, missed it. That was just another one. And and when people talk about him, I, I, I get the circus shots. I get the, the half court. I can remember also against uh, the Cavaliers where he made some silly behind-the-back pass late in the fourth quarter, threw the ball out of bounds, where he thought this was January and they were playing the Hornets or something. <laughs> like he didn't take care of the ball. He's not a good defender. Uh, and that's not. And, and when I'm talking about this, I'm not saying he's a bum or he can't play. That's not the narrative. Right. It's just that when we start talking about greatest of all time, there's got to be more. There's no way Steph Curry's ahead of Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas is a is a is a uh, top fifty player of all time. Is a Hall of Famer. Beat Bird, Magic, and Michael all in their primes. One two championships in a row, almost three if it wasn't for a bad call against in that series against the Lakers, and he did it without another great player. And what I mean by that, there was no other 50 greatest player on his roster, okay. just Isaiah Thomas. When you talk about Michael, he's has Scotty. When you talk about Bird and, 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 and Magic, they all have two and three other great Hall of Fame players and top 50 players with them. When you talk about Steph Curry, he has Durant, he has Clay, he has other players. And the other part is Steph Curry's never won a finals MVP, which is te- which says something, especially since Iguodala won one of them. Mm. Um, and the other part is obviously Durant is that guy and took over the team as soon as he became uh, a member of the Warriors. And there's no way if Steph was that guy, You could coexist with Durant, but that doesn't mean he would take your team, take your lunch money, which is the way I looked at Durant during those two years uh, with the Warriors. And probably the worst thing on his resume is that Steph Curry is the author of the biggest choke in NBA history. No team had ever choked down a three to one lead. That was the 73 and nine team. They won all those regular meaningless regular season games, they come down to the finals of three to one. All they have to do is win one of the final three games. Two of those games were at home and they lost all three. Forget about the Draymond missing one game. If you're that guy, if you're Steph Curry, you win one game and put that team on your back. He couldn't do it. And instead he has, he's tagged with the great, with the greatest, collapse in NBA history and so for that re- those reasons I can't put Steph Curry as high as other people or maybe you mm. would put him okay I gave you the I floor did, I, I rest my case do you want to bow out of uh, that <laughs> excuse my French hell no I'm not bowing out uh, on nothing um not not with all these notes I took man uh I, I you make some strong points. I'll give you that. But, you know, when we talk about the greatest players of all time, I've done my best to attempt to categorize how I define greatness. And, you know, I, I think it's a culmination of four separate categories being talent, accolades, 
impact. And I, when I say impact, I mean on basketball and the culture in general. And then that X factor, right? So I'll address the talent first. I, I, I know that, you know, you might have an issue with Seth Curry in the big moments in terms of those last 10 seconds of the game. But there, there's still 47 uh, minutes and 50 seconds to be played before that. And in those moments, that's the greatest shooter that we've ever witnessed. Stephen Curry has weaponized both his off the ball movement and his shooting ability like we've never seen before. That dude's Is he already the greatest three point shooter ever in NBA history. Without a shadow of a doubt. No, he's not. Without a shadow of a doubt. He's not. Statistically, he's not. Yeah, by, Ray Allen is. By what? St- are you saying in terms of three pointers made or shooting yes, percentages? Yes. Okay. Three pointers made. Yeah, he's I mean, not. Ray Allen played for a, for a, a longer I'm, period he, of time, so I, I think by, the, by by when he it's all said and done, whole, Curry's gonna have passed him up. Technically, he's not at this point. Can you give me that? At, at, even then, because it, the the volume no, that no, he no. shoots, I'm asking you: Is he does he make more threes than anybody else in the NBA? I'm not defining greatest shooter by the amount right. of threes that you've made. When I look at it, I'm looking at it from a standpoint of how much are you shooting the ball, and then at what rate are you making that? And, and no player in NBA history has combined volume and uh, field goal or three point percentage the way that Curry has. It, it's insane that you know you're looking at a guy that's third all-time in three-pointers made already, and he's shooting it at the sixth all-time percent clip. That That's that, that's almost unfathomable to think. And that that alone, to me, makes him the greatest shooter of all time. Just no one can put up as many threes as Steph does and make them at the rate that he does. It's just that the, just that the game has changed uh, from the standpoint that uh, people are putting up more threes than they did when Ray Allen and Reggie Miller played. They that, put up threes, but not nearly as many as now. That is true, and I will get to that point exactly. Um, because it was Steph. Steph is the exact reason that that is the, that way, but I'll get to that. When I'm looking at accolades, right? Six-time All-NBA, um, three-time first-time or first-team All-NBA, six-time All-Star, three-time NBA champion, and two-time MVP with the only unanimous MVP in NBA history. We got to give him a lot of credit for, for all of those things, right? Uh, there, there were other guys who should have been unanimous way before Steph. I'll give him the, I'll give him the credit that he got it, but it ain't because it was because there's a couple other times where one writer uh, did not, did not vote for him, and 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 that's what happened. So, so I'll give him that because that's what's happened. Mm-hmm. But he's not the, he's not the first guy. Who should have been a unanimous? I, I know Shaq had a, the, a very strong case to do it at one point during his yeah, career. Yeah, Shaq was a guy, and and Jordan should have been a unanimous. There's there's at least two or three guys who should have been unanimous before. But Shaq I, missed out by one vote. Right. I, I'm just saying it it ain't like it. it uh, oh my God, this is the it, it never happened before. It could or it could have never happened before. It I mean, should have happened. As That's my all. dad likes to say, shoulda, coulda, woulda, but it didn't. You know what I mean? So, you know. I, I, I get it. So, um, all right. Moving on to, uh, I'll move on to X Factor first because I'll leave Impact for last because that's where I think the biggest uh, argument for Stephen Curry exists. But when I talk about that X Factor, I know a lot of people want to knock him in this particular category. You already did it because, you know, in the clutch department, he's shown some lapses. And I think that the whole choke artist narrative on Stephen Curry is a bit overplayed, but... I'll concede the fact that he hasn't proven to be a stone cold killer. He 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 wasn't a Reggie Miller. He he's not a Michael Jordan. He's not that dude that I'm 100% confident in giving the ball at the end of those games. But let me tell you what Stephen Curry's real act X factor is. Are you familiar with the concept of player gravity? A player gravity? No. All right. I mean, here's some ma- Here's the made up stats so that my eye is going to tell me I'm watching something different. No, no, no. Because the, the thing with gravity is I, I the reason because I'm a little bit tentative on a lot of advanced stats as well. But gravity is one of those that I, I'm a fan of because you can visualize it as well as as seeing the numbers. Um, and the, the thing with gravity, all it really is is saying how much a, a defense has to respect a player, how much energy and time do they have to do in uh, in terms of stopping a player. And Stephen Curry is second to none when it comes to gravity, because the second that dude passes half court, 
you have to pay attention to him because he can make it from legitimately any spot half court if you leave him open enough. So that that's so much energy that the defense has to put on Stephen Curry and the fact that he's weaponized his off ball movement to the rate that he has. Now he's moving all the way across the court, scattering like a like a squirrel just got out of uh, hibernation looking for some nuts. That dude's insane in the way he moves without the ball. So now that's all that energy is focused on just Stephen Curry. What does that do? We've seen the ascension of guys like Clay, like Draymond, even Kevin Durant when he was in Golden State was the beneficiary of Stephen Curry's gravity. Uh, uh, you understand what I'm driving at with gravity? It's just essentially you have to pay attention to that dude so much that it, it, it pokes holes in the rest of your defense. Well, but it's funny, though, but his team choked down a three to one lead. He has never been able to be a finals MVP. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and those are the things that the glaring things that I think and. He's a liability on defense. Uh, that, that's just a fact. Um, and, and maybe a lot of guys don't play defense. But when you start to put somebody up there and talk about him being an all-time great and a top 10 player, it's just hard to believe that Steve Nash won two MVPs, mm -hmm. won back-to-back -back MVPs. Which right? he shouldn't have, but that's a no, side no, note. But, but he did. Yeah, I mean, should have, could have, would have. That, that's my point with Steph is that, is that you, you can't use just that as the argument because uh, Steph because uh, Steve Nash won two back okay. to back. Nobody would consider him the greatest, but a top ten player, right? Right, that's unbelievable. I mean, he's, Steve Nash has also back. never won a championship. Um, no, but I'm just but, but I'm but I'm saying from that standpoint. Well, that's why I can I, the MVPs don't don't because I'm still a believer in. A, do you have a short? Venue in sports. It's it's about wins and losses. It really is. Hmm. And when you talk about being in the big games and the big moments, that's what separates guys. It just it just does when you talk about all time greats. I'm going to nitpick when I want to put somebody up there. The reason that Marv Levy, who is a former coach of the Buffalo Bills, you know who he is? No, you know I'm not familiar. From? Marv Levy. Marv Levy and the Buffalo Bills went to the Super Bowl four straight years. Four years in a row. Oh, okay. Yeah, they I'm familiar with won. that team. Okay, they never won. Yeah. You know why no one ever mentions Marv Levy? Because he never won. You would say, why? He got the team to the Super Bowl four years in a row. See, I'm not Just sure if that argument won. applies here, though, because Stephen no, Curry has well, won. Well, my point is, is, my point is, it is about winning. And, 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 and when you talk about it, Steph has, yes, he's won, but, 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 it, but it's always been on. The healers, and and that's what I'm saying. If you show me that Steph Curry was three and zero in the championship games and won all three MVPs and had the the regular season MVPs and all the other stuff, now we got a different conversation going. He's he's on a stacked team. It ain't just Steph. Steph ain't that guy. Kevin Durant took his team. That's why he was the MVP. Clearly, who was the better player? On the, on the court in the finals, Steph Curry or Kevin Durant? Who's the more talented player? Without no, a shadow of a best, doubt. Who was the best player? Without a shadow of a doubt, the more talented player was Kevin Durant. But I, the you. impact of Stephen Curry, that is, it's not something to be seen, but it's something to be felt. Because again, that player gravity, just having to put respect on that dude wherever he is on the court, that opens up so much. That for doesn't everybody. mean that Kevin Durant is going to make the basket even if he's open. That's very you that's could, true. You could put you could put you could put Draymond Green in that spot. Say there was another guy who played Draymond Green's position, and Draymond Green became Kevin Durant, and 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 they had to pay attention to Steph Curry. Don't tell me Draymond Green is going to make the same shot. That no, Kevin I, but I I one hundred percent agree that there are players that have to execute based on the the opportunities it that Stephen Curry is providing. Open, right. But here, here's the thing, right? Because the foundation upon which Kevin Durant was able to be elevated, that foundation is still laid by Stephen Curry. There's a reason why he left the OKC Thunder, right? After having lost, we talk about Stephen Curry 3-1. He left the 3-1 loss OKC Thunder to hitch his wagon to what Stephen Curry, the foundation that he'd already laid in Golden State. There's a if reason Steph, for that. If Steph Curry was that guy, he wouldn't want Kevin Durant. Who if wouldn't want Kevin him? Durant? Why? Why would you want? You're that guy. You already won a championship without Kevin Durant. What do you need Kevin Durant for? To win more you know championships. Why do you need Kevin Durant? 
If Stephen A. Smith said, I want to come to Fox right now. If Stephen A. Smith down the championship, that's why. If Stephen A. Smith came to you and said, hey, Rob Parker, I want to join Fox right now. How do we make this happen? You would be like, nah, Stephen A., I'm good enough on my own. <laughs> we already work together. You, yeah, right, on, on first take, right. But if he said, I'm done with ESPN, I want to come to Fox, you wouldn't want him? I don't think Stephen A. would want me on his show. Do you know what I'm saying? Once you've established your show and it's and it's about you, no, no. If I had a, a hit debate show and I was doing fine and Stephen A. was over uh, uh, at ESPN and he was uh, his show was going down or, he, or wasn't doing as well, and he went, why? No, I wouldn't. And I don't think he'd want me either. Mm. Well, I, I guess the, the reason why Stephen Curry is a little bit different to me, he's already separated himself as one of the more selfless players in the NBA. And that that's just a, a, a product of who Stephen Curry is. It has it, its benefits and it has its drawbacks. I don't think he had a choice when Kevin Durant joined, whether or not to be selfless or to give up the ball to Kevin Durant. And the, the best player gets the ball and Kevin Durant was going to have the ball and was going to make those shots. So I, I don't, I don't. You could say, oh, he deferred to him. Nobody defers. Alpha males don't defer to to, to another guy unless you know he's better than you. And I and I know Steph knows it. And everybody else knows Kevin Durant is better than Steph Curry. Kevin Durant is better at Stephen Curry. And, and I'll admit, he's better in a final setting because that's when the game really slows down and isolation basketball starts to rear its head. But it, it still matters in terms of getting to that point. And getting to that point, that Stephen Curry that laid that foundation, I digress. I want to talk about impact real quick because that's the last of my four categories. And that's why I really think that Stephen Curry, you almost got me. You almost got me not to be able to talk about this real quick. Yeah, I see what you try to do. But um, <laughs> impact, man. We talk about telling this to the story of NBA basketball. You, you said that Curry, it's a more three-point oriented era now than it ever was when Ray Allen or Reggie Miller played. That's why Stephen Curry is making more threes. And I agree with you, but I do think it needs to be said that the reason it's more of a three-point oriented era now than ever before, that's Stephen Curry's doing. Yeah, but but, but I want you to, and I, I don't doubt that him having success making the ridiculous threes when he did, didn't make, uh, didn't change some some thinking. But also, they've been playing. They've been knocking down threes in Europe for a long time. It was called European style basketball, and okay. we had seen it. This has been. That's why Dirk Nowitzki and those big guys, even when Darko was drafted by the Pistons, that's what those guys did. They were out on the perimeter and they were shooting threes, and it was rejected at first in the NBA. It was, mm -hmm. but that's your st European style basketball. The that's thing, not just yeah. that. it's just not Steph Curry. The European style talking. basketball, I'll admit, there's a lot. It's a lot more three point movement and space oriented. But I don't think anyone's ever stretched the floor to the limit that Stephen Curry has. Just the amount of, of space that he can actually use to threaten against you in terms and, of where you can make a three from. And here's my other point. Name the other small guard like Steph Curry that since he's introduced this to the NBA that's won a championship. Not I'll one. Win. Not one. I'll because win. Stephen Curry is well, that well, good at it. No, but but it just tells you that when you when you talk about it, Kevin Durant wasn't uh 5'11 or 6'2 or whatever Steph is, uh making threes. He was almost a seven footer knocking down threes in LeBron James' face to win championships. So it didn't stop, it didn't change the way people won NBA championships. With smaller players, you might have shot more threes, but 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 it wasn't just uh, a step alone. It just it, I'll give you that that the threes, him making those threes from half court, uh, allowed people to feel more comfortable with taking those threes when normally they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you that, but I'm not going to sit here and say that the whole game totally changed because of Steph Curry because I don't buy it. I'm buying it. I, I'm, I'm selling it. You might not be buying it, but the thing is, right, we didn't see teams shoot threes at the rate that they did until we saw the Warriors do it. We didn't see teams orient themselves about, okay, we're going to use as much space in this court as possible until the Warriors I, I did it. I give you that. I'm not debating that, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying I, I, I haven't seen – I haven't seen uh, Trey Young is shooting threes at a high rate. Their te his team was in last place. Agreed. Uh, so and Trey Young that has nowhere near the talent around but, him that Curry did. But the style of play doesn't automatically mean 
and he was knocking down threes and, and, and putting up big numbers, it doesn't automatically make you a winner, is my point. It doesn't. So what's that intangible factor that, that separates Trey Young and a guy like Stephen Curry? It means uh, Kevin Durant and the other players that are around Steph. Well, what, what, well, let's think about what was Stephen Curry before Kevin Durant ever stepped foot in, in Golden State. Yeah, uh, two time MVP shoot. champion and had complete. He was one game away from having the single greatest season by any player in NBA history. If he'd have won yeah, that but, championship, and I'm saying I know we can play the if game all we want. No, I'm not trying no, to do that. If, you just said if woulda coulda. I know. I know. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I'm just saying the dude was one game away from having the single happen. greatest you know season ever. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't You're right. Because he couldn't win one of the final three games he wasn't that dude to, to, to win a game for the Warriors when they needed it and maybe That's Kevin why. Durant was the thing that put the Warriors over the top but 73 wins in one game away that Stephen Curry by himself that's just like you can make the argument all you want about the Patriots they were 18 and 0 they tore apart the NFL right well, no, the the, the, the the Patriots are the Chafote, so I don't even want to talk yes. about that. The cheatingest franchise of all time. But I, they are. I don't even want to talk about the all Patriots, right. but I see your point. You, my, my point is you can, you can hang your hat on that, but he didn't get it done. If he got it done, me and you would be having a different conversation. It just didn't happen. And if, and if Kevin Durant didn't go there and the Warriors went to the finals five years in a row and won four of them, We'd have a different conversation. It would be. No, I, I'm not I'm not trying to assert that we should have these hypothetical conversations. We can look at things as they happen. What was Stephen Curry before Kevin Durant? What was Kevin Durant before Stephen Curry? I saw Steph win a championship when LeBron was down two stars, when Kyrie and Kevin Love were hurt. If True. we want to really if we want to really dig into it, that's the championship he won. Okay. Then, then, then the next year he choked down a three to one lead. And then he decided that he had to go and get uh, Durant to help beat uh, uh, LeBron James. And he did that. So That's Stephen Curry, point. before Kevin Durant, two-time MVP, only unanimous MVP in NBA history, one-time NBA champion, been to the finals two years in a row. What was Kevin Durant before Steph Curry? The dude who couldn't get past <laughs> Stephen Curry. Yeah, but the difference is... That when the time came that they did play together, Steph Curry didn't outshine Kevin Durant. That's my point. If he was that guy, even if you add a Kevin Durant, you still would be the guy. It still would be your team. What are you going away from? You just told me he revolutionized basketball. He did. But you're going, but you're going to the big man, but you're going to Kevin Durant. In the big moments, yeah. Revolutionize the game if Kevin Durant at the end of the day, is making the biggest ba baskets and winning the games and winning the trophy. Because here's it doesn't the, even make sense. Here's the thing. You're a smart guy. I'm a smart guy. If we need a basket, if we need a bucket, we need an isolation bucket, we just have to give the ball to the best guy who has the best chance of doing that. I'm 6'3", Stephen Curry. You're seven foot tall, Kevin Durant. Of course I'm going to hand you the ball. But Why? that doesn't necessarily Steph make Curry you... Steph revolutionized the game. You just told me that. Yes, Why because in, go... because that is one moment in the course of a basketball game. No, the basketball game is 48 minutes long, and those other 47 minutes before those big shots, those moments matter too. Here's where you're wrong, and here's where you lose your argument. If Kevin Durant isn't, isn't on the court and you're in the same exact spot, you don't look at... At, at Steph Curry's size, you go, he's the the most, he's the only guy who could get us that basket that we need. And you go to him regardless. Because he would be the best out. player. Uh, he would be the best option that you had to get an isolation bucket. But if no, you're Steve I'm Curry. You that if I need a bucket and, 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 and I look on my bench and Kevin Durant's not there. You I'm go not, to Steph Curry. I'm, not, I'm going to Steph Curry. Of course. That's my point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it, does, it has nothing to do with size and all the other I mean it has everything to do with isolation no, talent ability that's what it has to do with I'm who, just telling you that you know that Kevin Durant's better and I know that goal. Kevin Durant is a better talent but he does not have higher impact than Stephen Curry he's a better player he's a more talented player but when no, we talk about when we talk about the greatest players I think that's a little bit of a difference but I think we've ex exhausted that argument all right we've <laughs> exhausted this and we'll have another we'll have another round hey of course uh, I'm always here for it I'm always here for it